road to Palenque is dangerous. You can't throw up with me, I'm gonna cry. A lot of vomiting happened. Why did he say to keep the windows closed? We're in the car for like six, seven hours. Okay, la cerrada. Yeah, we're going up that. <laughs> it was a lot. So like, when do we get a different driver? Is it a different car also? No, we're waiting for another guy to um, ride together. Correct. I'm wondering in the caravan, how many vehicles? Oh, just the two and only on the way down. Because we're coming back at, like our, on our own? Yeah. Got it, got it. The road to Palenque is dangerous. I'm kidding, not kidding. So this is a trip we have put off for about a year and a half as long as we've been in San Cristobal de las Casas. First of all, good morning, sunshine. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Karen, and me and my daughters have been traveling full time for about five years. We're currently living in Mexico and exploring all the surrounding areas and some of Central America. And today's trip is one that I've been putting off since I moved to San Cristobal de las Casas. We have visited as much as we could get before doing this trip. And this is for two reasons. The first reason is that there has been civil unrest on this road. Last year, tourists got stopped and stripped of their clothing. And another time, a whole tour vehicle got taken over and the people were left on the side of the road. Reason number two is that it's a really whiny road and it's a five to six hour ride. Now my friend Anne from Priority Focus Life and her son are about to make some life changes. So we thought that this had to be the moment <laughs> that we do this. There are just some things that we didn't take into consideration. The combination of a dangerous road and the windy road. Uh, we just had no idea what to expect or what would happen. I'm definitely not getting it. It doesn't look the same on the camera as it does in my eyeballs. You can't throw up with me, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Some things just can't be captured. So the outcome was that he couldn't stop for the people that were sick to compose themselves or vomit or for me to capture the beautiful scenery because there was no stopping even though we were traveling in a caravan of several tour vehicles. After about three hours we made a stop at a restaurant in Oscosingo, which was a pre-planned destination where all the tour buses stop all at the same time for security reasons. Some of us ate the ones that, the ones that could handle it and the other ones just used the bathroom and we kept going. We were in, car, in the car for like six, seven hours. How long was it? 12, 13. 12, 13, I don't know. There was a lot of puking out the window. And there were bags full of puke. It, it, was, it was a lot. So we just got here and feeling a little cranky. Feeling chipper. <laughs> Glad to be out of the car. <laughs> People say it's the journey, not the destination. And to an extent, I agree with that. We should be able to see the beauty in anything that happens. That's are really steep. 
what I feel like sometimes, just sometimes, focusing on those special moments like this. It is so muddy and slippery. <laughs> focusing on where you actually arrive and the beauty you get to explore, the things you get to learn. The new experiences you get to have make you look back at the journey and not feel so jaded by it. Yes, this was a rough journey for most of us, if not all of us, because even the ones that didn't get sick still were in the car for six hours. But looking at things like this, that if we not if we had not experienced that crazy journey, we would never get to experience this. This was from a civilization, from another lifetime. The people that lived so differently than us, held different beliefs, and saw the world just in a different way. And we get to be part of it. We get to explore and learn and see the hard work that the archaeologists have put into it to pull it back from nature by restoring all these buildings for us to have an idea of what it was like in the past. And it's a work in progress, just like us in our lives. And it's something that if we ever decide to go back in 20 years, it'll probably look completely different because they will have discovered even more. That's a mini replica. Esto se encontró orientada desde de, de norte a sur. Cuando levantaron la tapa, la de 5 toneladas, la deslizan y la sorpresa fue de la segunda lápida, de una tonelada. Quitaron la segunda lápida y vean la forma que tiene el sarcófago. Es como el útero de una la raíz del árbol de la vida, conocida como Sei. Diferentes tamaños. De hecho, la creencia que si lo tocan o lo abrazan es recibir el You see them? They're pretty big. Or she'll get a rash, one or the other. Sidian. Así en el sol y vaso. Puedes ver perfectamente. Oh wow, that's true. That is cool. For me, focusing on the wonder of anything that we discover just makes any journey completely worth it. And once we were here, we had to adjust our focus, just enjoy ourselves with the aspects that were good. Um, the heat was a lot, so mm, not everybody enjoyed that aspect. And one of the girls got sick from the heat as well. Things that they're still digging up. But when we looked around and saw the monkeys on the trees and the beautiful stairs going through nature, and this jungle that had taken back these buildings. <laughs> and this is the temple of the corn. And then getting to explore. Some of the buildings were open, so we actually had to go. We got to go all the way up and enjoy the view. Yeah, we're going up that. You have to be happy that it's open or sad. <laughs> Yes, the steps were a lot. <laughs> so going up diagonally was a sign of reverence for their God. Except the steps were supposedly very tiny, really short and very narrow. And so curious that the original ones were little and the new ones, they made them so drastically tall. Very curious why they chose to do that. 
but going up just for the view was so worth it. <laughs> that was a lot. Extraordinary. And this is what I mean about the journey versus the destination. We still had the journey of going up the stairs that might have been a little bit difficult but so worth it. You can't just divide life into journey versus destination. But what you can do is adjust your journey to feel even better. Who says you have to struggle through it? Oh, it was hot. It's been a long trip. The ride was too long. There was um, a lot of vomiting happened out the window. So we decided to stop and eat because the girls need a break. They need it for their stomachs to calm down and so we can enjoy the next stop. This trip was supposed to be three stops long. We can't handle it. Our bodies can't handle it. There's no point in doing all three stops if we're not going to enjoy it. So we cut it short. We're only going to do two. And we stopped at an unplanned place to eat so we can chill for a little bit. It's important. One thing I try to teach my kids and that Anne and I have in common is to just step back. Take a moment, take a deep breath, and readjust. Because the ride was so rough, not everybody enjoyed Palenque as much as some of us did. So we needed this moment and this is something that we specifically asked the tour guide if we could just skip one of the places so we could just sit down and have something to eat and calm down, like let our bodies catch up to all this activity that we were experiencing. And this is why I love, you know, surrounding my pe myself with people that have my vibe. Come prepared. Because it made our experience so much better to take this one hour break to readjust. And we had to keep going. The tour guide pointed out that there wasn't that much time if we didn't take off now to actually spend at the waterfall. So we took off. Why did he say to keep the windows closed? What he made it seem he's like, so they don't see if we have bags and stuff like that because the people are local of the area and we're traveling alone. Ah, because we don't have the caravan all the way back. So to me, it sounds like if they see something they want, they might try to grab it. I think there was a sense of relief when we arrived at the last destination. First of all, it was so beautiful and had such a nice vibe, but knowing that we would get to go home soon was nice. I think this is what we needed. It's so peaceful already. All of them were sick. <laughs> but then we saw the waterfall. I don't think any of us wanted to leave after that. It was so beautiful. And the weather was perfect. It was not too hot, not too cold. We explored a little bit, because since we all kind of felt off, we weren't sure if we wanted to go in the water. But after a few minutes of exploring and seeing everything that was around... To the waterfall. I think we all changed our minds. <laughs> and thank goodness we did. It was so worth it. The water was cool and perfect. Like the water was a little cold when we got in, but after a few minutes, it felt perfect. It was enough to cool us down from the heat in Palenque. And it was just so peaceful. Now there were some areas that the current was kind of strong. Okay. How do you like the water? Oh, it's perfect. Perfect. It's a little cold coming in, but yeah. It's perfect perfect ending. <laughs> but it wasn't very deep, so we had perfect leverage to not get swept away by the current. And the areas where you could swim were really well marked, 
so there was no confusion. We enjoyed it immensely. All in all, a perfect day. Thank you for watching. Love you. Bye.